Well, hey everybody, it is Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com, and today I'm going to unbox a couple boxes of some cool stuff that I just got in. There's one species in here that is super rare, you've probably never heard of it before, awesome little freshwater catfish that I'm so excited to have in. So hang out for that, and let's open these up and see what we find. There's other cool stuff too, but that's one that I'm like, man, I finally get to see these fish in person. It's amazing. So here we go. All right, here we go, opening the boxes up. Now, these guys were just picked up at the airport, what, two hours ago and driven straight here. And they were only in the air for about oh, 24 hours, 71 degrees, but that's a lie. Um, I figured out that that's wrong later, and I'll show you that. <laughs> so we figured it out. So, oh, check these guys out. These are albino red cauliflower fin swords. So these have the amazing dorsal fins, which we're about to see right now. Check these out. So these are a high fin sword, but a super high quality hyphen sword uh, when they spread these dorsal fins which they're not they're not going to do right now I mean I, I literally just put them in the tank a little while ago but when they spread those dorsal fins they're amazing so this is a different mutation than the typical hyphen sword that you see this is a super high quality one um, I believe that this one does not come from across with the platy I think that this is a, a separate mutation or or some kind of mutation on top of that one but it's fantastic I know that these are fertile because one of the adult females dropped a batch of babies in the bag so they are breeding and things like that so they, they can reproduce without any trouble and I'm excited to work with these guys and distribute them I wonder what would happen if they were crossed with like koi sword tails or some other strains of sword tails or maybe even platies what what we could come up with so I'm excited about that fish okay my favorite miniature rainbow fish well I like them all but these guys are truly special these are Erythrorhenia werneri or verneri or whatever um, and the thread fin or feather fin rainbow and I know they're not super rare or anything but when these guys display which they're not going to do now because they haven't been in the tank very long but once they settle in and start displaying oh my gosh they are absolutely stunning I can sit and watch a tank full of these when they're um, feeling happy and flicking their little fins and spreading them and uh, all that stuff when they're showing off I could watch a tank for hours in fact I have <laughs> sat and watched a tank for hours hardy fish simple to keep not a problem at all peaceful small and I just got them because I like them ever so much so threadfin rainbows featherfin rainbows whichever you want to call them uh, just one of the most unique blue eyes if you will out there just truly spectacular they're they're amazing finish nothing quite like it in the freshwater hobby that I'm aware of so those guys I'm excited to have um, here we go these are an amazing catfish these are Pseudobagrus trilineatus the highway catfish there's there's actually maybe a different genus that might be correct now but I forget the pronunciation of it I learned them as Pseudobagrus so that's what sticks in my head but an absolutely fantastic catfish small these guys top out at about three inches peaceful beautiful as you can see these come from streams and rivers in China and they don't like it hot they need you know a lot of it's it's not always a hill stream situation but if you think of a hill stream loach that's kind of the the kind of oxygen saturation they like and they don't like it hot so I'm keeping these guys at about 72 degrees you wouldn't want to keep them much warmer than that they'll do great cold so down in the low 60s and stuff would be just fine so if you have an unheated basement or something great species to keep the the challenge with them is going to be if you have warm tanks or tanks without high oxygen saturation warm might be okay 72 degrees but that's a lie I'll show you in a second um, if you can keep the oxygen content high okay platinum half beak these are an amazing live bear I know I keep seeing amazing a lot someone's gonna turn it into a drinking game and take a drink every time I say amazing in this video but truly just a solid platinum fish 
they're stunning and they're a dwarf fish these guys if they get to two inches that would be a big one they're simple to take care of um, for the first few days they just wanted fruit flies so that's what I tided them over with but now they're eating pellets just fine these are PE mysis pellets I just dropped in and as you'll see they're gonna eat them all up without any problem at all peaceful little fish they do like to be in groups so I wouldn't keep these singly they do hang out together not like in a tight school or anything but in a, in a group they kinda huddle up and they are a great surface dweller. They, they'll stick up top there for you. If you have just a few floating plants or a little bit of surface cover in, I don't know, a quarter of the tank or one corner of the tank or anything, they'll just hang out on the edge of that and be fantastic, cool, little, unique, live-bearing fish. So I like these guys a lot. I'm so thrilled that I could get them in, and I can't wait to share them with all of you folks. Platinum Halfbeaks. All right, what is next? I believe these are the neon green rasbora. So the kubatais are what these are, micro devario kubatais. Now, they're a bright, bright green color. And I learned the hard way that they're extremely sensitive to chlorine. So I have uh, massive chlorine filters that take care of the chlorine in my fish room automatically. And all the fish were doing fine, but I was having some trouble with these guys, and I could not figure out why, because by all appearances, they were healthy, and I was doing my normal regimen with them, with the medicines and the quarantine and stuff. And so I put a call out on Facebook, and I was like, hey, does anyone know if they're sensitive to something? Something's going on with these guys. Someone replied and said, well, I noticed that they're very sensitive to chlorine. So... I checked and it had been a while since I changed out my chlorine filters. Again, all the other fish in the fish room are fine though. So I, I wouldn't have thought that that was an issue yet. And the test didn't show anything. But I changed the chlorine filters and now they're just fine. So I think that must have been it. So super sensitive to chlorine. If you get these fish, I think they're going to be hardy except for that. Then just be sure you de dechlorinate your water and swirl it around before you put it in the tank when you're doing water changes, or I I'm sure you're going to have some trouble. Okay, these are cool Bararis species, just tiny little guys. They stay under an inch. This is Bararis maculatus, and they're a little bit like the chili rasbor, except for instead of a, a black stripe down the sides, they have three distinct spots down the sides, and they still get a, a nice amount of red on them. They don't stay brown like some of the Bararis species do. But it isn't as maybe intense a red as the Chili Rasbora. But still, pretty little fish. They tend to stay in a nice group. They aren't necessarily tight schooling, but they do pal around together quite a bit, as you'll see as they swim around this aquarium. They tend to eat everything. They love rapashi and any small little foods. And I have them in here with my... Um, uh, Congo Panchax Myers eye, a dwarf killifish which, hang, which hangs out on the top. These guys kind of take the bottom and middle area and everyone gets along fine. There's also some uh, Corridor's catfish in here and it just makes for a nice mix. Nice little peaceful community fish. Okay, so here's where I found out that the temperature was a mistake. Um, basically, I had been reading the top of the bags where the heat packs were so that the bag itself was warm and the temperature probe wasn't reading all the way down to the water so if I put it right on the water I was getting anywhere from 62 to 69 degrees so that last one was the sword tails it was 69 because they'd been open for a while by the time I took that temperature these are coconut huts 12 coconut huts for breeding my uh, pelvic acromis in and uh, black worms so so yeah I, I learned there that I've got to be really careful to put the temperature probe on the section of the bag that has the water in it and that's the unboxing well I'm excited about every one of those species I unbox they're all really super cool but those uh, catfish the trilineatus the highway catfish man that was a thrill to see those in person I've never seen those in the flesh before and to get them in and see that they are as beautiful as the pictures, even when they're still in the bag, was really, really cool. Those hyphen sword tails, ah, poof. Uh, you just don't see sword tails with that much of a dorsal fin very often. They're, they're amazing. So anyway, 
I really liked it. And if you liked the video, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. All that stuff us YouTubers are always begging you to do. And if you like any of these fish, they'll be available in oh, a week and a half or two at uh, getgills.com. I have a store there. It's called Dan's Fish, and it's at getgills.com. So if you have comments, leave them below. We can geek out. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.